Sure, your employee stock purchase plan treats everyone equally, but is it equitable for all of your employees? Today, I'm gonna to talk about the concepts of equal, equitable, and employee stock purchase plans. I'm gonna start with a series of illustrations. Now, this first picture is something that we can all understand. We've got this apple tree, it leans to the left, and so there's more apples on that side. The boy who happens to be standing on the left side of the tree is getting more apples. It's a very unequal result. In my second picture, we've tried to offer some assistance to the boys to help them reach the apples, but we wanna be fair to everyone, so we've given both boys the same size ladder. And that has worked out great for the boy on the left because he has a ladder that is exactly the height he needs to reach the tree. But it has not worked out so well for the boy on the right. By treating everyone equally, we've actually created a very inequitable result. Uh, and this is where we're at with a lot of our ESPPs. We have to treat everyone equally under the plan. But for our lower paid employees, uh, they are much more likely to be living paycheck to paycheck than our higher paid employees, and they probably have to spend more of their income on necessities like rent or, say, groceries than our higher paid employees. So for our higher paid employees, it may be no sweat for them to contribute at, say, 10% or even more of their pay, but our lower paid employees uh, may not be able to do that. By treating everyone equally, we have not addressed the systemic barriers that prevent our lower paid employees from participating in our plan. In my third illustration here, we've tried to do that. We've given the boy on the right a bigger ladder, so now he can reach the tree too. Uh, this gives us a more equitable result. It's not completely equitable. There's still more apples on the left side of the tree, but at least both boys can reach the tree. I'm gonna offer you several ideas to create a more equitable ESPP. Uh, and I'm gonna offer you one idea to get your ESPP to this stage. In this picture, both boys have the same size ladder, uh, and we've addressed the inequalities in a different way. Uh, in this case, what we've done is we've straightened the tree so that now both sides have the same number of apples. Uh, we, have, uh, we have figuratively removed the systemic barriers that created the inequality in the first place. So let's talk about my ideas. First idea, is to rethink the definition of compensation that can be contributed into your ESPP. Most plans only allow compensation in the form of regular wages to be contributed to the ESPP. Uh, but, and that's great for your salaried workers. But for your hourly workers, uh, a significant portion of their pay may be in the form of overtime pay, shift differentials, and shift premiums. And if they're not allowed to contribute those wages into your ESPP, that puts them at a significant disadvantage as compared to their salaried peers. Same thing if you have a lot of employees who are paid on commission. If they're not able to contribute those commissions to the plan, they're at a significant disadvantage. My second idea is to allow the purchase of fractional shares. Now this is something that is gonna benefit companies uh, with a high stock price. It is not unusual in those types of companies for lower paid employees to not be able to contribute enough to buy a single share of stock, uh, which means that they can't participate in the plan. Uh, allowing the purchase of fractional shares uh, is, makes the difference between them not being able to participate and being able to participate. And your stock price doesn't have to be as high as you might think for this to be an issue for you. Let's take the example of a plan with a six month offering and a 15% discount. So that's a, that's a pretty typical plan. Uh, and let's say we have an employee who makes $20,000 a year. Uh, and let's say that that employee wants to participate at just the very minimum, 1% of salary that employee is not gonna be able to buy a single share of stock if our stock price is $118 or higher on the day that our purchase price is determined. By not allowing employees to purchase fractional shares, we actually force our lower paid employees to contribute a greater percentage of their pay just to be in the plan. Uh, and then my third idea is to offer greater assistance to our lower paid employees. So this is my illustration where we're giving 
uh, the boy on the right, the bigger ladder. We're going to offer more assistance to lower paid employees. Now, make no mistake. This is not something that you can do with a qualified ESPP. Under Section 423, you have to treat everyone equally. But with a non-qualified ESPP, there is no reason you can't offer more assistance to lower paid employees. You could offer them a subsidy to help them participate. You could give them a greater discount or a greater match on their contributions. Uh, one way to structure that would be to set a flat dollar cap on the portion of contributions you're going to match uh, so that uh, anybody contribute a, can contribute above that amount, which would most likely be my higher paid employees, and the contributions above that cap don't get the match. So people don't get financial assistance for the higher, higher levels of contributions. We are concentrating our financial assistance at lower compensation levels. Uh, and then my fourth idea is a cashless ESPP. Uh, this is something that you can do with both a qualified or a non-qualified plan. With a cashless ESPP, employees don't have to contribute through payroll. Uh, instead, at the time that they sell their, at the time that they purchase their stock, they will sell a portion of those shares and use the sale proceeds to cover their purchase price. This is the same thing that happens when executives do same day sales with their stock options or when they have shares withheld to cover the taxes on their RSU awards. We are simply extending that financing method down to all the rest of our employees through our employee stock purchase plan. Now, if we do this on a qualified ESPP, it will be a disqualifying disposition of the shares that are sold. But by removing the requirement that employees contribute from their paychecks, we remove those economic barriers that are preventing lower paid employees from participating in the plan. Now, everyone can participate because no one has to take money away from, say, rent or groceries in order to be in the plan. And uh, so that's my video for today. I'm going to leave you with this happy thought that if we just straighten the tree, there can be enough apples for everyone. Uh, I hope you enjoyed my video. If you did, please subscribe to our YouTube channel so you are notified when we post new videos. Thanks for watching.